So here we are um, in my room, as you can see here. And I'm gonna show you how I would set this up for teaching virtual and face-to-face -face kids in my room at the exact same time. Once I start logging in, the first thing I'm gonna wanna do is make sure, let's say I've been teaching from my Chromebook in the past, and now I wanna teach with the ViewSonic board. I'm gonna want to make sure, because there are gonna be students in my room, that they can see what I'm presenting up here without having to be on the Google Meet. We really hope that in the next week while you're in your classroom, that you can try out these different strategies and figure out kind of what works best for you. There's not a one way that you should do this, and so figure out what works for you. Now, one of the ways that you could do this is just using your ViewSonic board, okay? I have Canvas open. This is something I would refer to during my class time. I also then have Google Meet open in another tab. And so when I was doing this, I will have kids in my room, and let's say I was gonna go over a few different reminders and then our class learning targets and what we're about to do. And I'm starting my Google Meet, and what you're gonna see right now as I start my Google Meet, that I am going to be using what's kind of innately here is my hover cam, right? Now, that's upside down. Remember that there are keys on here where you're going to be able to flip this. So, you know, the classroom is the correct way, right? And so we have kind of this look in the classroom. Um, and what I could do, just like what we've been doing before, right, is I could try and speak to the class that's online uh, and here in kind of this back and forth fashion. And if that's something that you wanted to do to keep it simple, one computer that you're using, you could do that. So let's say I wanted to though present my screen to students. I could in my Google Meet say I wanna share my entire screen um, and then flip back over to this. Now students in the call are seeing this screen um, and then they're able to kind of follow along and then hear my voice through the microphone that's coming from the hover cam. So that's one of the options that you could do this. Or I've seen up at the top of my board, I have that webcam. Now, how would you switch in a Google Meet between the two cameras? If I want not my hover cam, I'm just merely gonna click on those three dots, gonna come on up to switch camera, and you're gonna see that this image is gonna switch to the webcam view. And so you might be thinking, when would I use which one? Something to note is just how it's going to look while you're using the webcam. You'll notice they can't even see me on this camera here until I've kind of stepped out. And so one of the things to know is to know where in the room you can be that the webcam can see. Um, the webcam might not be the best camera for direct instruction. In fact, we might say the hover cam would be better for that, depending on where you could place it. Now, we think that this could be better if you want your students to see what's happening in the room as they kind of get that bird's eye view. But again, it's going to be more engaging for students if you're actually making eye contact with them. And in this view, with the webcam, they're not necessarily gonna get this. This might be better for a full class discussion of sorts or some sort of activity. We might switch to that camera. Now, I think when we have students in our classroom in front of us, we are often going to be facing the traditional way that we've always taught. However, it's important to know that we have online students with us. And if you're using the webcam, they're getting a lot of this view or potentially the back end as well. So something to be aware of is when you're doing this, what is the best way that my online students, whether they're using the hover cam or the webcam, are going to see me and feel like I'm connecting with them as much as I'm connecting with the kids in front of us. I think what's gonna happen is we're going to become very accustomed to doing this and literally giving our back to our online students, which again is not as engaging. And so let's think through this. I have another idea. You can see if it works for you, um, but this is probably what I'm going to do in my classroom. And so I have joined this call twice, once from my ViewSonic and once from my Chromebook over at my desk. Now, when I can start class, uh, let's say I'm presenting my screen so all the people sitting in my room can see the screen. 
online, the same thing is true. As you come over here, I'm now able to show my screen from the ViewSonic, which is what you see over here. And then I'm able to talk to my students more directly. Now, if I were to move my Chromebook, I could maybe place it here, where I could be talking and looking at my screen, and then also looking at my students at the same time. We are not gonna get the behind little shot, and we're able to kind of talk through what this would look like. That means that I'm probably thinking through, right? There's that other camera. Um, and maybe that's something that I would want to close during the call. So now they can still see and hear me and they can see what I'm presenting on the screen. Part of me would want to think through how I move my desk so I can be here talking to those that are in my room and talking and saying like, hey, online, what do you guys think of that? Throw it in the chat and being able to do both of these. This probably is going to be my preference. I'm gonna to have to think through how I arrange my room to be able to do this, but I like the view of this better as we're looking again at my students sitting in the room. I can look at my online students and presenting on the board. This will then allow me to, and I can decide if I wanna move my screen when I do this, um, as I walk towards the board, because let's say I'm going to then click through and talk through some other examples. Now my kids kind of online can see this in both ways where they can see me and they can see the board, much like my students in the room are able to see this. And personally, I kind of like this view. Now there's a few things that you need to be aware of while you're doing this. What you need to do is make sure that one of your devices is going to act as the microphone and one is gonna act as the sound. Now for me, that means that on my board, um, I muted the call that I was on up here. If I were to go backwards and look at my call, you're gonna see that I am muted here because my volume is unmuted here on my Chromebook because I want them to be able to hear me as I'm gonna be able to talk closer. Basically, wherever you're gonna talk closest to is going to be the mic that you're gonna to wanna to use. And because the Chromebook is kind of my, in my mind, portal to my online kids where I can look at them more directly, I think it's kind of awkward in some ways to be looking up at the webcam. Um, and so I think um, this is how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna have it this way. So it's muted here um, and my volume's turned down over there. And then I could either have my volume up on my Chromebook and unmute on my Chromebook. It's one way you could do it. You can kind of play around with this if it's something where you wanted to um, unmute on the board, right? You're gonna see, I'm sure you're familiar with this noise. If you do not, and I turn this up, you're going to get the echo. And if I turn on my computer, there's the noise. We're all gonna get at some point. That is because our volume is up and our microphones are up and there's getting feedback between the two. So you need to think to yourself, I need to turn down and mute one of each. And again, this would be something good to practice this next week. turn down my volume and I'm not going to have that issue anymore okay I, on my computer then here we are I am unmuted on this and then I'm able to turn up my volume on my Chromebook so if students see anything um, I'm able to engage with them as I go through um, whatever I was presenting here so I think this is where I landed is I turned my desk this way uh, so I could have my Chromebook here, my kiddos this way. I could take my wireless keyboard and mouse that operate the board over here. And as well as I get pretty good at operating this, I can still join my call here in front of me, join my Google Meet up at the board. I'm sharing my screen, talking to my virtual kids, talking to my live kids, and kind of making my desk kind of my mission control. 
So I think that could work pretty well. And then I'm not um, giving kind of my back at a verge to students face-to-face -face or virtual. Let's just be honest. This is a lot of change for us and change is hard and in some ways uh, unsettling. And so as we start shifting into uh, this new reality of teaching hybrid, which obviously across the country, many people have been doing all year. So let's think of ways that we can be successful at it. Maybe for you, that's just using the one computer and the hover cam and thinking about how you use the hover cam or switch between kind of that bird's eye view of the webcam. Or maybe you like the idea of using the two computers, using your Chromebook to connect with those that are online with more of a face-to-face -face view with you so then you can also face your classroom and then being able to share your screen and be able to teach that way. Now, this is gonna take some time. It's not gonna come naturally right away. And so um, give yourself a bunch of grace as we try this. And along the way, I bet some of you guys are gonna come up with some amazing ideas to do this even better than kind of what we are thinking about right now and how we've seen other people do this. So uh, we welcome your suggestions of things that are working. We hope this gives you kind of a few ideas of how you can do this. Um, and we wish you the best of luck. Your tech coaches are here to support you through this. And um, good luck as we move into this. Um, you can do it. We are all gonna be doing this together and our students are going to be so excited to see us both virtually and in person.